What up, what up, DJ J. Ronan? All elements, low lives, you already know what it is. I'm tapped in. We got my bro, mm -hmm. you know. Best stop. They call him Best Stop, Best Buy, even though I heard he's from Sunset Park. I don't know. I don't know. We, we'll talk about this later. But uh, give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for my bro, the birthday boy himself. He just celebrated his born day. Happy born day again. Yes, Poison Pen, y'all. Salute. Salute, my brother. Salute. Yeah, good to see you. It's good, man. It's so, good. it's been a while. We just have some fun for your birthday bash. Mm -hmm. Um, Next time, we need to do it in a bigger venue, please. I mean, I can't. I hit my head against that speaker like five times. I, I, you know, and I'm not tall. It was last. It was a last minute situation. You know, I had to. I had to. I want. I wanted to do it on Nostradamus. So a lot of people. I mean, so I had to. I had yeah, to do it. Yeah. It was. It, it was. Got, it it got. was definitely way too many people for that. Uh, you know, like 85 people for a 20 person bar for a little. <laughs> I'd rather have a small venue, a lot of people, than a big venue, no people. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. It's, well, it's nice to have room if it will turn around though. Listen, man. Well, when you go home and be like, yo, I was at that spot. There was so much space in there. Or, yo, I was in that spot. That shit was wall to wall. Like, which which one is the better True. experience? It was packed. Not 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 the spot. Hey, I walked in and there was so much room. It was so. <laughs> it was really empty. Yeah. It was you? so spacious. <laughs> I heard but the echo when I spoke. That's I want to do this again. COVID, I, I want to do this I, again. I'm like, not, I'm not gonna lie. Up. During COVID. I didn't want the club to be too packed, um, you know. But I mean, but that's I'm over that now. But that's, I, that's COVID, I, though. I, I mean, that that was for a, 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 a well a good reason that well a reason that was advertised as a good reason, right? So I mean, yeah. So I mean, that's different. But come on, nobody wants to go to an event, a function, a party, a celebration, any any event. You know, nobody wants to go there and, and you know, walk into an empty room, right? Like that's very true. So yeah, man. But next next time, next time you probably get a bigger spot. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm down to collab. Come on, let's get some money, man. You know, I'll be I'll be doing it just for the fun, man. I ain't, I ain't really, I don't be doing this party for the money and shit, man. But you know, I mean, I mean, you, you know. Hey, but, but but pimp the system, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's take it back, way back. Uh mm -hmm. I know you were born in Brooklyn. Where did you grow up originally? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Living Brooklyn my entire life, man. Rep, rep, and they rock from the star. Born in the star. I lived in Sunset. Lived in Flatbush. Right, Crown right. Heights for a little bit. So the whole borough, man, really. But I rep the star. But any of those parts, I lived years there. So I, I have no problem repping those areas as well. But I'm from the star. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? How would you say Brooklyn from when you were a kid changed compared to now? I mean, shit, a lot of ways, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, technology, first, first, fashion. First of all, like, right. like a lot of the mom and pop aesthetic is gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of the, a lot of the places that you would venture into or or go to have fun or whatever. Like a lot of them have been turned, you know, just destroyed and turned into like some corporate shit or some old you know, little candy stores with the arcades to play. Yeah, shit like that. Like. Perfect example, like my, you know, <clears throat> the matriarch of my family, we had a store on Utica and Pacific when I was a kid. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it was, she, like, when I, okay, she what had a store, like she, a bodega? She, no, an old school candy store. A okay. can, can, not a bodega, <laughs> a candy store. Like, that and the shit, you would go pick the candies out. Right, right, game. right. She had an old school phone, I love those she had an old those. school phone booth in the back. Cause she she was she was she was she was old. Let I me mean, respectfully. When I was born, she she passed away at a hundred and two, three years old. So when oh, I was wow. born, she was already like seventies, wow. eighties, or some shit. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. Rest in peace. So so she so her store was from you know from back, back in the forties, fifties, sixties, like old school, old wow. school shit. So she so when I was a kid, you know, I used to go go over there and like I said, like that's that that's the shit I'm talking about. But it was an old. I remember when I was a kid, like they would actually, um, cause her shit was, even though the technology was there, she was older, so her store was like vintage. Yeah, vintage. De like she, yeah. like yo, bro. Mm -hmm. First of all, phone booths was already going out of style from childhood, like. Right. But she had when you walked in the store, she she had the old school shit in the back where you could sit down in the shit. 
Like you walk and they, and they had a stool in there, you closed the door, oh, they had the phone, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you wow. could this damn like a, this damn like a, like an office almost, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Shit like that. So, you know, but a lot of you know, a lot of things that gave Brooklyn his personality don't really exist no more. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of shit, you yeah. know, you know, whether whether it's the um whether it's the people, whether it's whether it's the establishments, you know what I mean, you know, it's a lot of lot of shit. But but, but Brooklyn's ever evolving, so that's that's right. That's a good thing as well, but a lot of the mom and pop aesthetic is, is gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you see less, uh, 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 less corner stores, candy stores, especially black owned ones. Yeah, only, Back in the day, you would. Now it's more like coffee shops. It's corner store bodegas. It's either uh, uh, Puerto Rican, or Dominican owned, mm -hmm. or, or, or Arab. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, the, the, the black corner stores are they, they're very few and far between now. Yeah, there's still yeah. one on. There's still one on on, on, on Bedford and on. Was it Bedford and Putnam? Mm. Dickles, Paul's name is spot. I think it's Dickles. D i c k e l s. <laughs> yeah, and it's no Mick Mickles. It's something like Mick Mick. Whatever, something like that. Right on Bedford. I'm I'm giving y'all. I'm giving y'all a plug. I, I don't know y'all personally, but it's a black owned corner store, bodega, whatever, right there by liquor store. But there's there's not that many of them anymore. No more. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Because like I said, like you would have like the like like stores like that. Oh, number hole, you know what I mean? That's the shit that I, you know, you know, I guess when they cleaned up the neighborhood, they cleaned this out too, so. I feel also that when we were kids, just being outside, you didn't have to be in a gang, but you'd get into fights mm -hmm. as a kid, just, just to hold your own and be outside. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, kids, if they're not like in a gang actively, they don't really get into anything. Not I mean, like what? That. But, but that's that's also. Am I getting a one fight a bully in school? But that's that. tech. That's that's technology too, though. Because right. whereas motherfuckers had all the video games and shit like that, but you know, obviously the internet and shit wasn't wasn't right, that. Right. So it's like every like most of these kids now are just I'm online. I'm over here. Right. Well, I'm I'm, I'm so uh, they being when we had when we yeah. were social in person. Yeah, they're social through here or through the internet. So yeah, they're kicking it with their friends and all that, but. We online in this in this in this in this room right. for this game and shit. So the internet bullies now, right? So my brother like, or like, oh, he's he was kicking on me. I'm like, yo, sign off, nigga. Like, fuck, just sign off. <laughs> that's, that's like, <laughs> nigga, don't block, block the motherfucker. Off. You won't never hear what he got to say. What he got right. to say. But yeah, so that's that's one of the things because you know we had to, you know, we don't they don't have to be physically in the same. So like, so the the art of hanging out and shit like that is different. Then we was like, yo, I'm going down the block. I'm going to my man crib. We all gonna meet over there. And play games to get play some video games together right, right, or whatever. Right. You don't need to, yo, yo, y'all, y'all on? I right, let's <laughs> put the headphones on. Right. And you kicking it with a thousand people, but you sitting yeah, there on yeah. the couch. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so that's you know. I still play World of Warcraft that way. The headset once in a while. You know, so so the so the, so the you know the, right. the the web made the world small and big at the same time. It made the world smaller because, like. You could communicate with so many more people at the, you know, what I mean, at the drop of a hat with, with, that you didn't have access to before, so it made the world smaller. Yeah. But so, but it made the world. It made the world. It's, it's funny. It made the world smaller and bigger because it made the world bigger because you have more options because you don't have to physically venture out to whatever. Right. But it also made the world smaller because even though you're venturing out, you're not yeah. actually venturing out. Yeah, you're not social. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's like, it's kind of both. I'll give you a funny way in how I've seen Brooklyn, but in this particular situation, it's been style changing. Mm -hmm. So I remember back in the day, going to see uh, the homie Illa G over in Sumner, and police would stop me. Like, what are you doing up in here? Oh, you, mm -hmm. oh, you hear about drugs? Like, mm -hmm. give me a hard time. And then a couple of years ago, we were hanging outside late. I think I was dropping him off from the show, or you dropping me off. And I see white people jogging at two o'clock in the morning well, murder, on Myrtle Murder Avenue. Avenue. Mur murder, <laughs> yeah, it's, what it's, they used to call Murder Ave. Yeah. Myrtle Ave. But the, but the crazy shit is, but the but, but but that's the duality of this shit because yeah, that, but motherfuckers is still getting it though. Yeah. So it's so weird because it's like yeah. Well, if, if you're not in that world, I feel like if you mind your business, then you're good. You, you're so, uh, there, there's less random crime. There's, there's, there's less, less stick up. There's pins, less there's there's, credit cards. Stuff, there's less you know? chance. Right. But you, you know, bro, motherfuckers get hit with strays every day. Fuck right. what I'm talking about. Right. It may not be intended for you. Right. But it's the, the the reality is still right there, bro. 
You know what I'm saying? It's still right in your right. fucking face, bro. But it's just, but like I said, it's a duality now because people are in the neighborhood. You know what I mean? They may not be the direct, the motherfucker may not be directing their angst at them, but bro, it, it happens all the time, man. Motherfuckers right. ain't, how many times motherfuckers ain't had nothing to do with shit, get caught up in shit? It happens every day. Right. He was just walking to and the store. Fine. He was just, all right. He was outside when, when that was happening and now he ain't here no more. Like, yeah. So that's, that's not really, you know, it happens anyway. Yeah. It happens anyway, but it's just, it's just, you know. Times has changed. Yeah. It like this, like it, it, it's like I said, in Brooklyn, well, New York City, the world period is ever, ever yeah. evolving. You know what I'm saying? It's a, like, I, I, I treat the city as a living, be, breathing creature just like we are. You know what I'm saying? The city is, is yeah. Yeah. So, Penn, how did you wind up getting into the hip hop culture? I mean, hip hop culture has been around. Me, my entire life. So it's not getting into it. It's something that I was born into. You know what I mean? It was something that was already there at an early stage and was already booming. And it was something that spoke to me. So I, it was. It wasn't like a getting into it. It was. It was there, and I accepted it. And right. it, it spoke to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, you were rapping as young. I, I remember you always telling me you knew Sean Price and Boot Camp yeah. and, and Thurston Howe as, as a teenager, right? Yeah, I knew all of them from young. But that's not what got me. That's not what got me. No, I was no, already in, I was already into the, in the But um, I I tell you like this: as far as the actual act of the culture, the music and stuff, it started. It started. It, it, it for me, it manifested as hip hop, but it didn't start with hip hop. My family is my entire family is very musical. Right. And like, so I you got feel me in the church, right? Yeah. So I got older, you know, older relatives like my mother's first cousin, all of my cousins was putting our records from the 70s and early 80s and shit like that. So as a kid, I would go watch them at shows and shit. I'm talking about that because I was with my moms and that's how my cousin. I mean, so that's my cousin. What, what kind of group? Um, if y'all y'all look up, there was a very popular group in New York, in Brooklyn, from Brooklyn, from the 70s, 80s called Sky. Mm -hmm. You know, they had a bunch of his call, call me when you need someone to talk. That's, that's my family and shit. Right. So like, mm. That shit was booming. I was a baby, damn near. Yeah. I was a toddler type shit. And so I would always see, my moms would take me, I would see, so I would see them performing and all that, like, oh, this is crazy. Like, not yeah. knowing what, what it was right. going to manifest for right. me, but it was just like, yeah. you know, they, they, like, I go to my aunt's crib, rest in peace to her, and they had those plaques on the wall. I didn't even know what the, what the fuck that shit represented, but they, I see them, 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 them gold records on yeah. the wall. And right. shit. So, so it spoke. To, so I already saw that there was something with this music shit. Not knowing what I was gonna do, but what I'm saying it was right. around from right. my inception. You know what I'm saying? My mom sang. My mom said. My mom sang background on fucking on Al Green shit. You know what I mean? My wow. sisters sing. Like my entire family is heavy into the music. You know what I mean? When I was a kid, like like I said, Sky was my family's group. Used to be around. What's your name as a kid too? Fuck right. Uh um. -uh. Love come down. Evelyn Champagne King. Evelyn Champagne King. Evelyn right, Champagne right. King. My uncle was married to her sister. Okay. So okay. this is all shit from when I was. So you were around her as a kid? Yes. Yeah. I haven't seen her since I was a kid. Right. That's a little story, but. <clears throat> right. But yeah, so this, these are all things that I seen as a kid, like as a not like as a, you know what I mean? From from day one, that's this the shit that I was born into. You know what I mean? Right. But um, uh, do you it, remember that instant where you was like? All right, this is what I'm gonna do. Well, I I don't I tell you like this. When it comes, well, to get to the to the hip hop shit, like my my my, my pops, right? My pops is a music. Like I said, everybody's musical. My pops plays. My pops to this day he plays um keys and shit. He, you know, nice. plays in churches and stuff like that. Shit like that. He's like a musical director and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Organs too. Yeah, I said exactly. Nice. And um, so uh, my pops was obviously that. Music, everybody's musically inclined. It was, it was a studio in my crib forever. It was always a studio in my crib. So to get into the hip hop stuff, my pops used to um, <laughs> we used to know strength. My pops used to hang out. We used to this dude used to come to the crib all the time, and and, and you know do mixtapes with him, and you know they would make beats and all that stuff. But it was a very prominent rapper from the eighties. You know what I mean? Cutmaster, uh, DC, Brook, Brooklyn, is in the house. Mm -hmm. Right, that's my that's my pop that's my pops is man. So as a kid, I'm seeing these motherfuckers in my crib. Wow. Like so, this is like I said, this is literally, you know what I mean. So I've been in the crib and what we call them Hakim because that was already after the 
that that was already after that era. But mm-hmm. like, so these motherfuckers, I would go to my crib and see like old school motherfuckers from the eighties and shit. Like, you know, I mean, my my pops, he, he um he did he did he did some like some some production work with like salt salt and pepper and shit like that. Mm. So like I said, this was something that was always just there. So after when seeing how it was it was easily accessible. Like I wasn't one of them like a lot of kids from that era, if they were interested in the music or the hip hop stuff, like a lot of times their parents would be like, yo, they was the term away. But I didn't get that because my pops was always into the music. Right. So I didn't get the why you guys why you want to rap and that that stuff is not like nah. He was like, oh, that's dope. Yeah. I'll make some beats for you. Like it, it, it was it was like that, which which was but that time it was not it was not it was not the norm. Like I would write I would write rhymes and then like and then go and go to and like I would spit balls for my yo listen to this and I be spitting some bullshit. But I'm with my pick like yo ah, 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 ah. And he's looking at me like never shut me down never was like yo what are you doing like you'd be like, like no constructive criticism. I mean yeah like they, but they would never. But it would be negative. It, it was not negative right. though like right, right. I mean first of all and like as I get older I realize like like. My pops is a music guy. He's not necessarily a hip hop guy, but hip hop is a part of things that he fucked with. Right. I'm a hip hop dude, like completely. So it's right. a difference. So like obviously I know now that he, he his expertise might have been what it was at the time, but he's not a rapping hip hop type right, person. Right, right. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the criticism with the raps wasn't wouldn't be but so much anyway. You know what I'm right. saying? You, you know what you think sounds good and what don't sound good. But you be like, yo, these balls this and that. He ain't right. right. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the fact is, he helped. He helped. He never. He always um encouraged me. Didn't shut me down or whatever I had. So like, and um and and like I said, we had a studio in the crib. So a lot of a lot of people from the hood would come through and record. And what got me to doing that shit? I'm like. Yo, all these motherfuckers coming over here, like, yo, I'm better than these niggas. Uh, that was just the, 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 the that was just the the, the, the kid ego speaking, mm-hmm. like never recording that. But I'm like, I'm here every day. You got all these other motherfuckers coming in here rapping and shit. And I'm just like, bro, like I just wrote like 42 verses right over here. You, you know what I mean? And then and then and then, it's, and then it really started being like a blow to the ego because then you be getting like like kids like my age, like like. Well, if I was 14, they had like coming through oh, doing their demos and shit. I'm like, you fuck this motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I'm nice, nigga. I wasn't, yeah. I, but I wasn't. I, I felt like I was. So like, but that actually pushed me because see, like all all that shit, he all the work he was doing, which which, right. which, which was dope, but it, it, it kind of pushed me because I'm like, okay, now you work with people in my age range and this, this, and that. And and it's right, the development of all of that shit was right in front of me. Right. So it just made me be like, you know what? And and I started doing it. And then I didn't even I didn't even look to once I once I really you know got my footing under myself. I didn't even need them for nothing. You know what I mean? Respectfully, you know what I'm saying? Like I was just like, you know what? All right, I'm good. And I just and I just ventured out, and then I let him see the work that I was doing for outside. I was like, yeah, I'm really I'm really on it, like like mm-hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I so I I let that push me to. Venturing out and just earning my shit out in the street. So when I came home, motherfuckers say, "Oh, I'm really about that. I really do what the right, fuck right. I'm talking about." You know what I'm saying? What, what were some of the the crews you were in coming up? I know you had different affiliations over the years. I mean, Plus, I, I have whole Rebel Arms, Team Holly, but even before that. I mean, when I first started, it, honestly, <laughs> when I first first started rhyming and shit in school. Like t- taking it a halfway serious, like actually recording like freestyles and shit like that. Right. It was it was me. It was my man Marv. Mm-hmm. My man Court. What's Marv's MC name again? What was his name at the time? I recorded him with Bam a while back. His name was VM. I, and if you want to know what that stands for, I let him go to Anchor. <laughs> I know I know good. I love you. His name was VM though. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was us and and DJ Self because we all went to school together. Wow, shout to Self. So we would great, we would, great. We would get out of school, get out of school. You know what I'm saying? Ride the train because at that time I was going to school and um, we was going we was going to school in Bay Ridge, so we had to ride all the way from the start of Bay Ridge. And Self lived in Clinton Hill, so he put Fort Greene, Fort Greene, Fort Greene, not Clinton Hill. Yeah, yeah. Self lived in Fort Greene, so. 
we all went the same. So we would ride all the way down from all the way from from from, from fucking Bay Ridge Drive, take the R train all the way to Atlantic or whatever, which is like a trip. And then we would just fucking go to the store on the corner, go go cop cop the fucking uh the ninety minute, mm-hmm. and then we would just go upstairs. He jump on the tables, and we would just you know what I mean. So that's how I started. Like, and I was with DJ Cell. He was rapping too. He was nice. He was, he was better than me at the time. I tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Because wow. he was he was always he was always tapped in. Right. He because I, I, um he he always he he always had to, I think I think he I think it was his older brother like had to plug with the records. He was doing shit before him. So like right. as far, I think he was doing like if I'm wrong, correct myself, whatever. But I um I believe his older brother was like doing reviews for his magazines, like old magazines back in the days. So he would always had the records and shit. So he it's like from when we was from back then, he had he was who he was then. Like early nineties? Yeah. 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 Early to mid nineties, yeah. Yeah. So he had everything. And he had everything back then. You know what I'm saying? He had everything back then. And like he was like so I remember his mixtapes. My yo bro mid to late nineties. He was already as I'm saying, because he was already he was already on it like that. Motherfucker, he did the Locks family mixtapes and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. Like that in the nineties? Yeah, this yeah. is yeah. It's self around a long time. Self, self, is self is dope. So yeah, that was how f- first when I first started like fucking around with rapping and shit. That's going to his going to his crib after school. We were just fucking freestyling and spit a million verses over every instrumental. And that was that was how I started pretty much rhyming and shit. You know what I'm saying? Fucking with them and shit. It was the first motherfuckers I rhymed with. Other than yeah. And then what crews came after that? Uh the, I guess the first crew break it down chronologically. I guess the, I, the first crew that motherfuckers would know me from, that people still mention to this day, is Stronghold. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that was the first crew I was a part of. And who was a part of that crew? Who was the members? Breeze Ever Flowing. Shout out to him. He was at the party. Breeze Ever Flowing. It was Breeze Ever Flowing. It was, well, the core, it was those five core members, but then they right. it expanded to 10, and then it was even more than that. It was a lot of motherfuckers. But, Breeze ever flowing. Couldn't tell Sally wasn't part of Stronghold. <laughs> <laughs> so the first, the first, the start, the first five was was Breeze, Index, Lifelong, myself, and one unnamed clown shoe. <laughs> it was five of us. Yeah. And then um, it, then after that it was then we went so that was one hand and then we went to it was Wiz. Mike Terra, Immortal Technique, Swave Seven, DJ Static. So that was strong. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then of course all the friends and family and all that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that was the first the first thing that a lot of people may know me from was the stronghold shit. Because that's when we started running. That's when we said the battle scene crazy. Hard, we started dropping the mixtapes. We was we was you know, you couldn't do nothing in New York at the time without without encountering stronghold, any any show, any battle. And we and we definitely had that. That was shit. more freestyling off the head battles, right? For the most part. Yeah, that ever was. Or some written rhymes here. I mean, it was a mix. It was a mix of everything. But right. I mean, but that that, that it was definitely the, the freestyle era. And on beat. Mm-hmm. But outside, of course, cipher. Outside was one thing. On beat, inside. When we was battling indoors at the time, it was definitely it was definitely on beat. No fucking. Um, right, right. No, no, no acapellas and shit. It was blaze battles, source battles, bragging rights. Bragging rights. Um, every like every rec like music factory used to always have battles. A- what was the shit of Kanashi? ABC Records, motherfucking mm-hmm. music factory, B Street. Like every th- this is this is when it was just like a no man's land. Like everybody had their own brand of what it was. So you would just have to right. go from territory to territory. Mm-hmm. And I remember you go by some rules. of that stuff. I, yeah. I know you definitely won End of the Week MC Challenge. Oh no, I, I, I you know I start bad like battling. Publicly, I guess I, you could say I started with ABA Hip Hop, mm. which is one of the first online. Might have been me first. Um, online radio hip hop radio stations. Right. So I was up there, and I was a battle champ up there, and I went, I went undefeated. I battled a lot of motherfuckers. I actually met Sarah Connor there. I battled Sarah Connor there. <laughs> How'd that go? I won. <laughs> Shout out to my sister. Shout out to sister. But I, yeah. I won. I battled. I battled. I battled. Who, who did I battle up there that y'all know? I battled Rack up there. Who? Rack. Rack Low. Rack low, rack low. I battle rack up there. Oof. Uh, 
I battled, this is years ago, I can't remember. But I mean, I'm just talking to people that y'all might know that I battled at ADF. Right, right. Battle Pack FM up there. Mm. I battled Pack up there. Shut the pack. And this is, you know, um, about, I met Sarah Connor there. I battled right. her there. I battled a million motherfuckers outside. But yeah, I was, I, 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 80 Hip Hop's my first jump that I battled. Yeah, that was a spot back in the day. That was fun. I, and, I, and, I, and that's, and that's, 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 era, that's honestly, what, honestly what made me say, oh, we can actually do something with this. Cause, you know, at that time, we still fucking young. I don't know nothing, bro. Like, I never even made a song. All I knew right. how to do was write rhymes and just, you know what I mean? Like, go. I didn't have a, any, any similar to song structure and shit like that. But going to 80 Hip Hop, because when I started going there, like, I'm, it was fucking young as shit. So I I, was, I didn't realize we were learning as we was going along, but the, the, my experience there is what made me realize, damn, I should I should try to record music because I was doing I was battling there. Remember, eighty hip hop was a big thing, so I'm battling there. Yeah, and, cynical worked there, right? Cynical worked there. Beat Money's worked there. A bunch right. of motherfuckers worked there. But um, so but I remember like I was going. To, this is this is the first place where I was beating motherfuckers beside beside motherfuckers in the hood. Like you know, I mean. I, mean, I, I don't I don't know boot camp. That's all day one shit. I don't count over that. I'm talking about people that I never like. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm like I'm battling and then fucking and then fucking outcast, fucking big boy and, and Andre Kidd. Like yo, that was dope. I'm like this right, right. fucking outcast, my nigga. Like you feel me? Like, that's different. You know what I'm saying? Like I never I had never experienced. Nigga, I met Eminem. Hey, right? You know what I'm saying? Like so, like going there was like you oh, battled him though. I didn't battle him. Breeze Breeze battled him that's and Karate good. Karate Joe battled him. Rest in peace, Karate Joe. Karate Joe battle M on the corner of remember where the gas station was up the block on Lafayette, on the corner of Lafayette and House there. Yeah, it was the, where the gas station was. Yeah. It's not a oh, gas station no more. Yeah, yeah, by the yeah, by the club, by the club building. Yeah, they took that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah they took it out. But yeah, but right by the on that corner of the gas station, Karate Joe battle M, and it's crazy because M pulled up with the outsiders, and at that time, mm. so he's just Rod this, Digger, mm, Young Z, but um. Mm. Pace one. Z was Z was there. I don't think Pace was there. Z was there. Um Slang Tongue, rest in peace, Slang Tongue was there. A few of them motherfuckers was there. And, and M was there. And this is at the time, like, you know, motherfuckers knew who the outsiders was. <laughs> they knew who the white folks was. <laughs> Had he done uh, rap Olympics already in Skittle Jam? Or, or maybe not? I, am, I don't shit, I don't yeah. know. It might you know what? I don't think so because after no, it was before the rap Olympics and shit. Yeah. But yeah, so like we would go out there and, and like I said, I would see motherfuckers like that. But well, obviously, I didn't know what Eminem would be. But you know what I mean? But yeah. Outcast was Outcast. Mm -hmm. okay. Fucking Fat Joe and Pun was Fat Joe and Pun. Coming to idiot. Like, you know, mm -hmm. and these motherfuckers now, all of a sudden, just because I can talk some shit and say, say a cool line, now these motherfuckers is treating me like I'm one of them. I'm like, oh, no, nah, I can do this. Yeah. Like, like, oh, no, nah, I can do this every day. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that's what gave me the energy. Like, and then, but, but hold on. But how did it go with Breeze and Eminem? I gotta ask. Wait, um, it was dope. I can't tell. I, I can't give you no details on what it was. I tell, was film, but I, I tell you this. I, I, I tell you this. Breeze was so good that Paul Rosenberg wanted to manage him after that. Mm. I tell you that. That's right. that's a fact. Yeah, yeah. Anything I say, you can go fucking reference that shit. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know what happened, why that didn't occur, right? You got to talk to Breeze about that shit. Right. But yeah, yeah, so the, the 88 Hip Hop, that's what made me, and that's, and that's what we fall strong on too. So doing the 88 Hip Hop thing, mm -hmm. that was the first thing that made me realize that maybe we could do something, like, and actually be, like, recognized as an artist and actually, oh, shit, we can perform and do shows. And all of that yeah. shit started there. Like, everything, most of the things that I did started there. As far as you know, what I mean, like me, even me, even me doing shows by myself because we by the time we doing stronghold stuff and it's but you know it's like five six people we all but my, I got my first solo show ever because I was battling somebody outside ADA hip hop on the street like we used to do and I smoked this motherfucker and this guy walked up to me and was like yo I go to Pace University I book shows mm -hmm. I want you to perform you you dope yo you, you want to do a show. He says, like, I got, like, like I got $400 for you. Some shit like that. And I'm like, hey, I live at home with my mom. $400 is wonderful. Like, let's do that. I was going to, I rap for free. Like, what you talking about? <laughs> so, it, it, my man, fuck was his name? JDS. That was his, those were his initials. We used to go by JDS. He went to Pace. Mm -hmm. 
know what I'm saying? Shout out to JDS. Pace High School or University? Pace University. University. Pace University, downtown. So, um, and, he, and so, and then, like I said, it, all this shit just started, like, 88 Hip Hop is kind of the backbone for all of this shit, because, so I do, I, I battle this motherfucker outside. He literally walks up to me outside after I fucking smoked this kid. Mm. and was like, yo, I want, I want you to do, mind you, I don't have no songs. I have, I got a million Freestyle. verses all over the place. Yeah. I have not I one song to my name. So how did that show go? This is, so, <laughs> like I said, so this is how, so this is what That's happened. So, it's so, so, of course. Yeah. So I went to B Street. Went downstairs, just got bad vinyls that I like, and I went to um what was his name? Oh my god, oh, this, this, these are years, this is years and years. He used to fuck with most of them sometimes. I went to this DJ's crib. Oh my god, yo. Wow, this is years ago. I went to Son's crib. I can't remember his name. I'm gonna remember it when we leave here. And I'm cool with us. Don't ask me that. Okay. I don't I went to his crib. I'm trying to and if I, if I remember he lived. Whatever, that's irrelevant. That's gonna be too much okay. of a fucking. But I went to his crib. I had the beats that I like, and I was just like, "Yo, these are the beats I like." So I went to his crib. So I just worked out a routine, and I had a bunch of rhymes and shit. So he went with you with the, with the vibe. So he, so he DJ for me. Right, right. So we worked out a routine. Maybe like fifteen, like no CDs, no CDs, no nothing. Vinyl, no, just vinyl. Vinyl. No C, no, no, no CDs, no, no eight that, no that. This is straight up wax. No flash drive. No flash drive. No Serato. No uh-huh. This is vinyl. Two turntables and Michael Mixer. That's what, what year was this? 98, 99. I remember the instant replay machine started coming out. After 98. That. This like, yeah, this I, like, I hated them. Yeah, this like 98, 99, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, so he's like, yeah, I want you to do this show. Whatever. So I did and, and, and this is and this, like I said, like this is my introduction to like people that I thought were stars and shit. You know right. what I'm saying? So and this was the show. This was the show. This is the first show I ever did, bro. Like, solo. This is, it was uh, Rakim, Fat Joe, The Beat Nuts. Mm. It was Rakim, Fat Joe, The Beat Nuts. Except the Juju and Les. And, and Rob too. And what's them dudes from Staten Island? That was part of the whole Wu-Tang thing. Kill Army? Ruthless Bastards. Oh, damn. And, yeah, and, 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 and me. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and me. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Single and Protect Your Neck records, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So shout out to them. They, they're from the island. You know what I'm saying? So that was the first show I ever did. So I went up there, did that shit, uh, you know, and, and I got a great response. And I was like, oh, I guess, I guess I'm a solo rapper now. Like, yeah. I, like why not? Mm-hmm. So then from that point on, I'm like, right, I guess I got to make some music. You know what I'm saying? Like push it together. So then I'm right. like, so then I from that, that from that point fuck with uh the stronghold and all that. You know, and Bre- breeze ever flowing, shout out to breeze ever flowing. You know, he's big bro. Watching him do what he's doing and all that kind of helped me like get my shit together just as far as structural right. music and all that shit. And then that was it. That was pretty much the start of recording recording music and all that. You know what I mean? But I, I never had recorded nothing. Before that, I had a I had a million you know rhymes and shit. But I never recorded no music. I, I met you a few years later. By then, not only did you have singles out and mixtapes out and whatnot, but you uh, you were hosting a lot of events. Mm-hmm. And you were like curating battles and stuff like that. Yeah. So, how did that start? And then you know talk a little bit more about how did that start? You put out. That's a, okay. What well, the, the, the curating and hosting battles? Like I said, I came from the battle scene, so that's all I did was battle winning. So I already had. The contacts that everybody that battled ever at the time, like I knew everybody. Yeah, at that time, you know, if you was in a certain scene, it was a small, like now it's a billion motherfuckers, but at that time, it's a small community. So even if I didn't know you, but if you did what you did, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna know somebody that know you. Right. Like it's still only one or two degrees of separation. Right. So um, how I started doing that, I got a I got a job at for this website called Hooked.com. I remember that. So I got a job at this website. It was a hip hop upstart. It was an upstart website, mm-hmm. and um, at the time, it was a revolutionary idea. It was e-commerce, like it was an all-in-one. Obviously, this is years before you can just do everything right here in one fell one one place. But at the time, it was like wow. So it was a hip hop website. So they had all the. So they the, this was the idea. They had you know, they, they they had all the news coverage. You know what I'm saying? They played. They had videos on the site. But what separated them at the time is they had e-commerce too. So we actually had a warehouse 
on Washington Street downtown Manhattan. So there was an office and there was a warehouse. So we had all the hip hop clothing and stuff of the era, like all the shit that was that was that was that was that was popping in two thousand. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we had a warehouse week. So if you want to get whatever Jabot shit, whatever, whatever shit that was mm-hmm. that was jumping at the time. You know what I'm so saying? yeah, all that shit. So we we had we had a warehouse. So you know, motherfuckers would place orders and we would and we had the web customer service. So it was it was it was all it was yeah, a, still Mecca? What, what, what was called? Whatever whatever popping at the time, bro. All yeah, that shit. PMB. Definitely P and B. So yeah, so I worked I worked at this website, you know what I'm saying? And I was doing a lot of and and and, um, and Diddy Diddy was one of the partners. Harry Belafonte was um one of the exec I'd be, I, I'd be at I'd be at work and Harry Belafonte would walk in. Like, hey fellas, I'm Harry Jay, you said that you said that and, and, yo, and I and, and I'll <laughs> say this man, Harry, yeah. Harry yeah, Belafonte great too, man. Harry Belafonte was a was a was a was a, was way older than all of us by you know decades decades and decades. Yeah. But when I tell you, this man had the strongest handshake. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> probably worked factories when he was younger. Like, okay, <laughs> you work. You, you were working since you was five. <laughs> I get it. Stacking bananas. But yeah, so <laughs> so like so it was an interesting place to work, especially being being that young. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we out there working and shit, and so like I said, it was it was all it was everything hip hop, just a one stop place for it. Right. So they were throwing. So what, what they were doing was to build awareness for the site. They started throwing mm-hmm. events. They were throwing like little club events, shit like that, and then they started throwing battles. Mm-hmm. Now, Mahogany Brown was the person. Wow, that was uh, mm-hmm. in charge of throwing the battles. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was working there, but I wasn't. In charge of shit. I was very low on the total pool at the time. And we was probably younger than most of the motherfuckers at the time, too. But um, so I would help them with the events and shit. Mm-hmm. And now it happened by chance because I worked for the website and they were throwing these battles. Now, not that I was leaps and bounds above motherfuckers at the time, but it was like, how are we gonna have you in here battling these motherfuckers and you work here? You know what I'm saying? So it went to so I was just so I just started recruiting everybody like yo, you know what I'm saying? So right, instead of, right. I couldn't be well, I'm gonna be battling every week at the place that I for, for a company that I work for. Like that's just mad corny. You got paid extra for it. Yeah. Nah, but it, it but it but it's not even fair to everybody else. We gonna come in. Oh, how, how pin gonna lose? Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's not fair. Yeah, that's not fair. Hey. So I so I so I never battled with them, but I would bring it like I you know I would bring everybody there. I, you know all because the, the, the hip hop the MC community is small. So we started throwing these battles. It was like every other week, I believe. And we had so much talent there. Like, yo, I can, I, I can name motherfuckers. And this is, and this is a decade before the grind times and the URLs and all that shit. This is like 2000, 2001. But we had, um, I, I bought Jen in New York. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Jen. Matt Hoffa. Mecca. Immortal Technique. Diabolic, mm-hmm. Smoke Dizzle, Shells, all these motherfuckers came. Smoke Dizzle was bad that? Thing? Yes. I didn't know that. Smoke was bad. Smoke used to run with Shells. Mm-hmm. He was just, he was, he was just Smoke. It was Smoke Dizzle. It was just Smoke. Okay. Smoke, Shells, Big Zoo. It's a, it's a fucking larger list of motherfuckers from the scene. Pack FM, Tone Death, Manifest, whatever. Right, right. And um, so these are guys that I was recruiting. Uh, that I was recruiting because I knew them more. Many Styles, mm. all, all the MCs that I ever. He changed his name now. I, I am many. I am many, right? right. Yeah. So um, I did a show with him. Right? We're doing these. We're doing these. We doing. So now I'm recruiting all this talent, and we I'm helping recruit the talent, and now right. we're doing these battles. Battles are going real well. We're doing wetlands, all that shit. So I so another spot I missed wetlands. Yeah, wetlands was the shit. That was the spot. I said I said I seen. I seen Tepper Squad beat the whole club up one day in, in, in Wetlands. <laughs> I seen them fuck the whole club up. It was crazy. It was bad. With ambulances and it was crazy. Huh? Pun two was in there. Pun, yo, son, niggas was passing. Pun was sick because you know Pun wasn't really that mobile at the end. Rest in peace. He was a big. I'm a big. He was like seven hundred pounds when he died. He was a real, real, real. And he was so Pun was. You know he didn't move around a lot, but if if he got older, he was a problem. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> The motherfucker, yeah. the motherfucker was sitting at the bar. The motherfucker was passing him bottles. He was just hitting whoever walked past him type shit. Like, if he ain't know you, he was just hitting you. 
but not moving. But like, I'm just here though. But if you're, uh, <laughs> ah, ah, like, <laughs> crazy shit, bro. Crazy shit. But um, yeah. So one day, so we, you know, we doing these battles every every other week. It's going well. My high school girls part of it. She was well, she was the mastermind at first. You know what I'm saying? Um, D Nice, D Nice was DJing. Like mm-hmm. I had D Nice. We D Nice was one of my DJs. Rest, I mean, rest, peace to D Nice. Not rest in peace. Yeah. Peace to D Nice. Let me fix that. Peace to D Nice. Um, shot oh, money. DJ shot, D Nice. Yeah, yeah, he's DJing now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is D Nice. Yeah. So D Nice with D Nice with DJ with us. Uh, Jive ja, Droopers Droopers the Riddler Jive poetic with DJ for us. Um, who can DJ for us? Who can? Um, yeah. a lot of people. So we, we were taking off. We were taking off with that. So I'm just mm-hmm. curating the talent. And we and we and we having all these people come. So we would, it was every other week. You know, we had people come to perform. Like I, I would have fucking Jedi mind tricks. I would have MF Doom. Mm-hmm. Uh, all these motherfuckers just pop, popping out doing their thing. And one day, as far as hosting, to get to the answer to the fucking question you asked an hour ago, as far as me hosting <laughs> the battles, as far as me hosting the battles and shit, what happened was. And we used to always have guest hosts every week as well, like because you know we we had a we had a popular website, so like had MC Light come out, mm-hmm. we had a uh, lyrics, you know she was a dope ass model back in the day, like all these people from BET and shit, they would always come out and co-host with us, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we would always get somebody that was you know rele- relevant at the time to come do a co-host. I was not a host. We were supposed to have a host one day. I can't remember who it was because this is a long time ago. We had somebody coming through the host. Um, one day, and they couldn't make it, so we were left without a host for the battle. And so, uh, so we trying to scramble to find a host. Keep in mind, I've never hosted nothing at the time. I never hosted anything in my life. You know what I'm saying? And it's funny because as much as I rap and talk shit, I, I, I guess I was kind of shy with that. That's not nothing not, not I even thought about. Like I'm gonna go ahead and just keep y'all like in control this traffic talk for an hour. Like, I don't want to do this. Like. It wasn't something that I was. It's a different skill. I, mean, it, I, I do that, but I don't. I can't really rap. Yeah, rap. it's a completely I mean, different. I can rap a little bit. It's, but a, not like that. it's a completely different skill that I didn't. That I wasn't aware that I had. Right. So, so Mahogany's like, "Yo, we need you to host," and I'm like, "Hosting this shit? Like, <laughs> I, I did everything I needed to do." Like, by the time I met you, you hosting Lions, then you hosting because here, because there. I, but, but right. by that time, I I got thrown in the fucking in the pit. Right. We didn't have a host, and she was like, "Yo, I need you to host." And I'm right. like, "Nah." So she started doing, "You scared, nigga? You scared?" Like she started doing that shit. I'm oh, like, "Reverse psychology." <sighs> All right, yo, uh, and then and 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 I haven't stopped since. You know what I mean? But yeah. it was it was literally she. We didn't have a host that night. I said, "Grind time events, URL events." I've, I've hosted tours. I've hosted dot. I've, I've hosted with a mono technique tours with who else? Yeah, everybody, fucking Talib Kweli, motherfucking. Yeah. I, I host the Rock the Bell stages. I mean, right, I can't right. even. I can't even. I've hosted everything, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? I fucking done voiceovers for television shows, video games. I've yeah, done yeah. all that shit. I'm playing the Warriors and hearing your voice uh, on my PS2. I was like, what the hell? Oh yeah, that was the first game I did. <laughs> yeah. That was the first. That was the first. The first voiceover that I did, and I got that from a battle. Wow. See? I got hooked up with that from a battle. Wow. That's one of my favorite games right there. Yeah, the Warriors. Remember that? The PS2. Yeah, yeah. yeah. multiplayer. You used to run around yeah. on the bottles. I, I, wish I, I, wish I, could, I wish I could remember some of the shit I said because you, you definitely like I was all in that game. Yeah, yeah, you were. yeah I was. I had I had voices all up in that shit. But you did other stuff for Rockstar, I think, too, right? Yeah, I did. I did like four different Grand Theft Auto games. I did Liberty City, Vice City, Daytona. Yeah. Um, Project Gotham Racer. Probably some things I forgot. Like we talking about a long. A long list of things for a long time, which is cool. I got a resume, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got a resume, but yeah, the um, we always doing your own voice, or you doing like no nah, other voices, video too? game, whatever, whatever the script say. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I don't have to say, like, I'm gonna change it. Me. Up. Like, are you changing your voice up for a whatever it called for? Normally, it was just not too much. I might have done a little, little gruffness or little, but it wasn't. It wasn't like I'm just doing a total. Right. Just hi everybody. Yeah, I wasn't doing no shit. I wasn't doing no shit that drastic. Gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wasn't doing nothing that drastic. Like there was times like, <laughs> like, 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 like oh, yeah, if it called for certain shit, like yeah, I could, yeah. but it wasn't nothing like it was just completely yeah. matter of fact, and that's funny because that you say that because you get back to the warrior shit, all right, boom. The tie back on with the rap shit. I did the 
I did the Blaze Battle in Florida. Mm-hmm. And um, my man that was also in the Blaze mm-hmm. Battle, my man, my man Juba, Greg, Craig, what up? Sorry, Juba. He was in the battle as well. Greg, not Craig, Greg. He was in the battle as well. And um, he just came in after the battle, like, yo, yo, you got a dope voice. And I was like, all right, cool, look at you, know what I'm saying? And, we, and, we, and he knew, he already knew Breeze and my man and shit like that. He was like, but he, he, he was like, yo, you ever thought about doing voiceover work? And I'm like, Nah, but take my number. Like, <laughs> like, like all of this shit. Like, like the hosting that was by chance. The the, the voiceovers. It was like it, it takes somebody else to see what, that you make what you may have a talent for that you may not even realize you have a talent for, and, and put you in the loop. And that's what happened with the hosting. I didn't. I got thrown in the in the pit, and I just did it. And with the video game shit, right. yo, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta come in. You got a distinctive voice, and I was just like, all right. Sure, take my number. We and we 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 we, we communicated and shit like that. But you know, it took a, like a while later. I, I can't remember how much time it lasts. But just one day he calls me. I answer the phone. He's like, "Yo, you ready? You ready to put in some work?" I'm like, "Yeah, what's up?" He's like, "Yo, we doing we doing uh the Warriors." You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. a few months. Like, we doing the Warriors, whatever, whatever. I want you to read for Cyrus. And I was like, Cyrus. I'm like, "Yo, bro, like, like that's going to the doing the voices." I'm like, "Yo." From a kid, Warriors was one of my favorite movies. You know what I'm saying? Like my, yeah, my mom, yeah, used, to, yeah, my mom used to show me Warriors when I was a fucking kid, and that's like to me that that's like Brooklyn, that's New York, that's everything. So like, what? Yeah. So Warriors is so when you tell me, Classic. so I know the parts. You know what I'm saying? I know the players. So you say Cyrus, I know what Cyrus sound like. Right. That's a pivotal role, and I'm like, I don't sound like fucking Cyrus. Yeah. Can you count, sucker? I don't sound like that guy. His voice is very distinctive. Right. The future oh, is ours. I'm thinking of um the Cleons and the Heather Warriors. Yeah, su- yeah. no Swan. No, Cleon. no Cleon was the black dude. Swan was the white guy. Yeah, Cleon. Swan yeah. took took over after. Swan took over after. Swan was the white guy with the with the feather. Right, right, right. right. It's Cleon was the black dude that, right. that had the. the Cyrus was the can you dig it guy. Right. right. He was the head of the. Wait, wait, don't tell me. Name of the gang. The riffs. Gramercy riffs. riffs. Yeah, the Gramercy riffs. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, so they had geese. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know you like that. Yeah. So um, <laughs> they asked me to read for that, and I'm like, keep in mind, I have no experience. I never did this shit before, so so. But I also know that I don't sound like this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So I went in, right. I did it. You know what I'm saying? I did the whole, I did the whole. Can you, nigga? I did the whole shit. Like, right. I ain't never did this shit in my life, but I I, I read the fuck out that shit. I did this shit. And, Nobody and is wasting anybody. Right. So I did this shit. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I didn't get that. I know I didn't sound like it, so I didn't take. I didn't take no offense to not getting that. But they was like, "Nah, but we can use you for this, 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 and this." Right. And I was just like, "You know what's crazy? Not to cut you off, Dad. We, me and Dad just had my father just had a conversation of that moment when they really had that. But we'll talk about that another time. Rubble Kings. They had like five hundred right? people. Oh, they brought the delegates yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was actually there. It's a documentary. Wow. Yeah, so. yeah, I seen Rubble Kings back in the day. Yeah, I think, I think that's what it's about. Uh. Speaking of your distinct voice, I remember there was this girl who I used to talk to, and she used to do an impression of you. <laughs> and it was so funny and cute to me. I shout to Michelle. But she's, I ain't talked to her in years. Michelle, what up? There. But uh, she, she, used, she used to be like, yeah, points and pins. Like, <laughs> stronghold, like she used to do. It was, it was funny. So we spoke about your distinctive voice. Let's speak a little more about some of the records you put out. You know, um, you know, the money shot. I mean, I, I remember you had a single on, uh, was it Nervous? Knock down? I'm, f- I'm fucking you <laughs> up was on Nervous. That was, I dropped out on Nervous. Right. I actually had a Duck Down contract. I never dropped the album on Duck Down, but the album that was going to come out on Duck Down came out on um, Fontana University. That was the Pick Your Poison, the Mark of the East record. With your favorite A&R? Yeah. <laughs> shout to that sucker. Oh boy. Yeah. Scumbag. Scumbag Charlie. Let's call him Scumbag Charlie. I don't call him nothing. All right. But yeah, but that <laughs> but that but that um that project was initially gonna come out on Duck Down. Okay. But it did. So it didn't even go. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. So I did that record, I was Pick Poison Off the East, the Money Shot album that came out of Fontana. Universal, that was uh, 
Yeah, that was me. I was just my album, but you know, she Mortal Technique, Silk the Shaka, MOP, Gilly the Kid. He did have Gilly on there, that's right. Yeah, Gilly the Kid. Uh why Silk the Shaka? I like Silk the Shaka. I answer the question. Everybody always asks. Everybody always asks the question. Like, yo, I hate yo, motherfuckers be acting. But, it's so funny. But, how I'm there's so much better people on No Limit. I like Silk the Shaka. He, motherfucker, he like, it's not about this. Why, 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 why about that personality? It, 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 and, like, it fit, it fit the song. It fit the song. Like, people get, I don't know, man. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be five rappers from no, the No Limit era. Definitely mystical, fiend. That was my top two right there. Remember me, fiend, the one that took the shot. Yo, fiend, oh, oh. fiend's, fiend's fucking delivery. Oh. Fiend's delivery was crazy. Bro. And his voice. And he could F- sing a little fiend's, bit. Fiend's delivery was crazy. No Limit, No Limit had a roster. Yeah. But yeah, I, but I like Silk Shock as a question. I know y'all. It's funny how everybody act like they ain't like Silk Shock. I know they always act like stay, When he stayed going platinum. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but shit, yeah, I like Silk Shock. So what? And I can rap, so fuck y'all. Like, that don't mean I, whatever. <laughs> but um, that's the answer to the question. Silk okay. Shock, I like him. Pause. And we did a good and we did a good song that he was on beat on too. So we. <laughs> and then I remember you did this highly quickly clean mixtape. That was paying homage to uh, Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon with this amazing DJ. Snips. Motherfucker. <laughs> Shout out to my nigga Snips. 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 <laughs> Shout out to Snips. I think he did some cuts on there, right? He did some cuts, yeah. But I came up with the concept. I chopped up the movie. And I remember you on the cover with the glow, with the red glow. You cut a bullet in your teeth. You did Mm-hmm. It looked crazy. I, I gotta yeah. show you that mixtape. This is so uh, dope. Pick and poison, who's the master? That was that was a fire ass mixtape. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting that back out, bro. That was a fire ass mixtape. I'll, I'll, I'll give you half the money. You give me half the money for my music. Did you yeah. <laughs> see that? See you trying to do the fuck out of here. But um, right, I'll give you seventy five percent. We um, nah, that was that was a, that was a good project, man. Pick and poison market. What was, what was it? Pick and poison. Who's the who's the master? That was who's a mixtape. The, who's the master? I give out that that sample was showing up. Okay. Who's the master? And who was on that mixtape? Uh, Sway, Usual definitely. suspects, more technique, Sway, uh, Raz, Raz, Kaz, Nims, yeah. Nims is on like two, three songs. Mm-hmm. Nims, who else? That's my bro Arch. Rest in peace, my brother Arch. Yeah. Arch is on there. Peace, Arch. But that tape. The way I put it together, I was always so proud of it. I felt like it was kind of like a labor of love, like the way I chopped, I chopped the movie up, and I think if I put that out now, I'll get sued big time. No, definitely. And I remember doing that shit with you, doing doing that mixtape with you in the, in the crib. That was that was that was fun. That was a long night. I remember I think I had to go to work in the morning right after that. I was tired as fuck. Cause I remember when I was hearing one of the skits. And I and I heard my voice and I was like, oh, the, the outro, that's what it was. And I heard the outro. You know how you hear shit, you just, and it takes you back yeah, to yeah. whatever. And I was listening to the outro and I'm like, oh yeah, this was definitely six twenty in the morning. And I had to be at work <laughs> at like eight o'clock. Like, yeah. like there was no energy in my mm-hmm. smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I remember chopping up one of the songs from the soundtrack. I chopped it up for the intro. I think it's um when when you got the glow. Mm-hmm. It's uh, Willie Hutch, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I, I chopped that up. You did the intro beat. No, that was a, that was a fire mixtape. There was a lot of good, lot of good songs on that. I remember mixtape. you were going on the road with that heavy. Uh, yeah, I saw, I saw a lot of them shits. In fact, I saw a lot of them shits. Like 20,000 plus, right? Shout out to, I, I wish I had the uh, accounting. <laughs> <laughs> we saw a lot of them shits. Shout, shout out to PRD on that too. Yeah, yeah. PRD, press it, press did a lot of work help press and get them shits out there too. So yeah. Shout out to PRD. Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? What else? Whatever shit. I mean, features and shit. You know what I mean? Or uh, what? Fucking, I did a bunch of features and shit. You know what I mean? Like, what do you think some of the bigger projects that you uh, appeared on? Of course, uh, Mortal Technique Revolutionary Volume 2. I mean, everyone seems. Uh, Peruvian Coke. That was a big record. Yeah, I, I, perform, I perform Peruvian Coke to this day. Yeah. Like, that's that's one of the big songs that we rock and everybody goes crazy every to this day, so I, I perform Peruvian coke all of the time. That beat sounds so Peruvian. The flute, it's it's from, it's from Scarface. I know, but I just picture like little flutes and somebody like riding a llama or something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? See, Those see, are dope beats. Peruvian coke. Um, people seem to be hyped because I did a song with Doom, so shout to Doom. Yeah, you on was it Victor Vaughn? Mm-hmm. One or two? Might have been two. 
Mm, shit, trying mm. to remember. That was like one of MF Doom's uh, AKAs. Yeah. Yeah. So we get that, that bloody chain song. Get a lot of love off that. A lot of shit, man. Uh, I can't remember half the shit, bro. It's been a long time. Bro. A lot of features. I did, a, lot I did of a whole lot. And, and, and on the indie scene, I, I did a lot of features, bro. I was looking at your discogs. You, you, you were looking at it? I haven't in a while, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, it's mad shit. It's a lot. It's crazy because these motherfuckers ain't real life. Like, your bro, like, like, like people see, yeah. people see, you know, the battle rap shit or, or see, like, me with my bro motor check, me, you know, realize, like, your son, like, my boy's got catalog. Yeah. Catalog. Yeah. You may look at one thing and I realize there's a million dollar things going on over there that motherfuckers is intertwined with. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I never, I never stop cooking and shit. So there's always something with me on it out there anyway. You know what I mean? How'd you get more involved in the newer battle rap scene? Brian Tom, URL, King of the Dot. How did, how did that all come together? PH. I was on, I, used, I was Chris on, a, I was on a roll heavy. But by that time I was already, records was already out. We fucking right. doing the Rock the Bells tours. We fucking doing that. Like I'm doing like four or five tours a year, you know what I'm saying? Like Mortal Technique shit going crazy, you know what I mean? I was doing good off the albums, and like the whole Rebel Arms thing was going good. Like right. Diabolic was cooked in, Chino itself was cooked in. You know what I mean? Right. That's a crew that people that don't know it's a crew that uh, Mortal Technique put together, correct? Uh, Rebel Arms. I guess yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, all that shit was bubbling. I wasn't really, and plus the and plus. There wasn't really a scene for battle rap at the time anyway. You know what I mean? Right. All that shit we just kinda had died down. And then um I say around two thousand eight, nine ish. Mm -hmm. Um PH Pumpkinhead, rest in peace, my brother. You know what I'm saying? One of my one of my one of my close friends and shit. He was uh starting to work with Grind Time. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're well in Cali at the time, right? Or Florida. They started in Florida. They started in Florida. You know what I'm saying? So, but then they obviously they expanded to California, New York, all yeah, that. Right. But it started in Florida. <clears throat> so, um, PH was started doing the events up here with uh, Jay's Juice. There's a, there's a dude up from from Yonkers called Jay's Juice. Shout out to Jay's Juice. Mm -hmm. He was actually running the Grand Time New York Division first. Hmm. And then uh, him and PH was working together. I don't how that ever that occurred. Don't ask me that was before I got there. But it was Jay's Juice first. He bought in PH or they bought it, whatever. And PH was a part of it. Mm -hmm. And then it was them two. I don't think they really meshed like that. I can't get too much into that. I mean, I can say they had beef or nothing, but I don't think they really they really rocked each other like that. So, right. so Jay's kind of. So this is not good chemistry. Yeah, so Jay's. He, he can answer the question. I can't. But so anyway, so Jay's left. You know, I don't, I don't think it was no like. It wasn't no forceful shit, but he, he made his way out. PH. Stepped in and took over the whole shit. Right. And then um for what he was doing, he kind of had reached the window. A ceiling. Not a window, a ceiling. Kind of had reached the ceiling. And I was always like PH, you know, that was one of my close friends and shit. So mm -hmm. I was always giving him advice and helping him out with shit. Anyway, he was already because he was throwing if remember he was throwing those Kids would throw a bunch of shows. He would do a lot of shows. He, was, South he, was, a, he was a heavy, he was a heavy yeah. promoter as well. He promoted a lot of things yeah. as well. He rocks some, some of my events yeah. on my birthday. Yeah. So, um, but one thing that he didn't do as great as the artistry was the business. He didn't really know how to bring money in and shit like that to, right. to, to a certain extent. That's why he would always, like, so before before I was even a part of Grind Time, mm -hmm. I was a part of Grind Time. Right. Because I was help yo, pay yo, I'll get you right back. You know what I mean? Throwing the bread, I pull up. So I was already a part of the shit before I was even a part of the shit. <laughs> yeah. But he um he approached me, you know, he approached me like, yo, I need help with this shit, man. I want you to partner up with me. You know, we try to build something here. He and he's and PH was a very persuasive person. He kind of sold it to me. And at first I was like, yo, bro, I don't give a fuck. I don't, I, ain't, I didn't care. Like I've been hundred hundred percent honest. hundred percent honest. I was like, yo, bro, I'm on the road, we getting at that time, like you know, you you, you, you when, when things are going well, you you always think it's just gonna stay like that till it till it ain't. Yeah. You get yeah. show money, yeah, and merchandise. Like I was, I was good, you know what I'm saying. So I'm like, ah, whatever, man. I ain't worried about this shit. Like, but then I started paying. Then he, but he, he would always send me links to the to the, to the battles, to the battles and shit. Right. And then everybody that I was fucking with was involved. 
Now that time Sarah Connor was battling a little bit right. still. So 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 it's like so I'm not so I'm not a part of this shit, but everybody that's a part of it is calling me and I'm giving everybody else advice to what they're doing in this shit. So I might as well just might as well I might as well be a part of it. So that's kind of what happened. Right. So um I was you know I was already helping finance things and stuff like that, but then when I started seeing how it was working, I'm like, yo, but we could really build something here. Like and I started thinking about the act the MCs that I had access to and you know the, the things that I did previously. I'm like Motherfuckers can revolutionize this shit, bro, for real. Right. If, if motherfuckers really, really, really. So then we, so, so when he, when I realized that, then I was like, nah, you know what? I got you, bro. Like, let me take this shit over. He wanted, he wanted to pay more attention to him, to, to him, uh, to, to being an artist and rapping and shit. I didn't understand that at the time. Like, I mean, I understand of uh, uh, the one of these keep your craft sharp, but I didn't understand wanting to be an active battler when you already are. In a position that's arguably more respected than that, they already looking to you. Yeah, I'm doing with Brooklyn with Marco Polo. Yeah, 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 yeah. so I didn't get yeah, like yeah. I didn't get to like to come in to be an active like a- active battle rapper, but I respected what he wanted to do. Like I'm not gonna tell him, like Pigs was older than me. I'm not gonna tell him not do what he wanted to do. Right, you know what I'm saying? So, and he held his own with this right. and other people. But I just didn't understand yeah. going from it's like it's like going from the head coach to. Going to going on the court. Now I respect going on the court. You, you can play, but it's like yeah, you was you was, you was, you was already in the front yeah, office. Yeah, like yeah. so, I didn't I didn't understand it. But right. he wanted to just be the artist. He didn't want to concentrate on business and none of that shit. And plus, I was, I guess my skill set was better at that. So I just I just took I just took all the resources that I had, added more to it, and ran with it. And we fucking pretty much shaped battle rap. We started throwing these events out here. They were taking right. over the fucking city. There was nobody else doing it at the time. Um, there was a there was a big void. Five uh, points. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, that, that's it. That, yeah, that was a great but, but there was a, there was a big void because uh, Smacking them wasn't throwing battles. They started throwing. You know what I mean? Um, they Smack wasn't throwing battles. Bragging rights they wasn't tough for their bragging D's. Right. right. Only. They wasn't even doing that at the time. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying there was a big ass void. There was no regular events at the time. Right. There was none. It might have been a little, a little one here and there. Lions Den was doing a few things, but they wasn't big neither. Right. You know what I'm saying? But Lions Den was around, but they wasn't big. They was, they was doing. Think about it. They was doing record stores. We was doing venues. Right. And I respect what they did. They, because they, they came. They had. They brought ice to the game. They brought awesome to the game. Goods, lux. So that's that's my Rushmore shit. Right. Right. That's my Rushmore shit. So I'm definitely not. You know what I mean? But. To, to the level where we, nobody was doing what we were doing. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, we, we brought it back out to the club. We made it where motherfuckers was coming out. We was like, yo, we bringing Styles P and off. Nobody was doing that shit. Nobody was doing that shit. You know what I'm right. saying? I basically commercialized it. We, uh, we, we, or, we organized it. We made, we, we made, we, we built, we built, we built rosters because, okay, Smack do battles with the DVD shit previously. You know what I mean? He didn't have a lead. It was that was like a snack at the end of the DVD. Okay, you like all this stuff. Okay, we got something for you. We got Rex versus whoever. You know what I'm saying? Rex. So it was shit like that. Right. They didn't have a roster of MCs that they were developing. It was they had people that they knew that rap that was good, and we go okay, we gonna get you to do a battle. That's different than I'm developing 40, 50 motherfuckers. I'm throwing these events in these clubs. I'm building them up yeah. to. And we we got we got one lost records. We have divisions. Who, who, who did that? It's different ball game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we started really um, doing well and being a, becoming a force in the city, and then I, and then obviously being a satellite for the other grind time cities such as um, Florida. I can't remember the city in Florida. Was it Orlando? Was it Miami? Whatever. Florida, the Bay, LA. You know what I mean? Shit like that. So upstate New York. At later. Later. How you know long was with, with, with grind time? How long? Hollow. Uh-huh. Yeah, we, yeah, we, Grind Time, we introduced the game to a lot of people or and cultivated a lot of people's DNA. careers. You know, you know what I mean? Um, you know, DNA came up through Grind Time. Okay. We, I mean, we, we got the, DNA came through one of our, um, tri- Cortez. one of our tryouts. Cortez came up through Grind Time. I mean, Cortez battled in, in other places first, but right, right. The, 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 the formation of what so called so, 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 so con, DNA, Cortez. Conceded, disaster, slave seven, disaster, uh-huh. PH, Rome, Charlie, 
Charlie Clips? No, nah, not Charlie Clips. No. Okay. Nope. Not Charlie Clips. He didn't come out to Grand Town. Hollow. I said Hollow. Uh, this is so many fucking QB, so many names. Misfit, Misfit. You know what I'm saying? Misfit and and, and Misfit came to my crib. That's how she like. Like we didn't we didn't do no politics shit. Cortez called me like, yo, my, my sister could run. I want to see if I can get in some battles. I was the first person to interview her. Mm-hmm. I think a day or two before that battle mm-hmm. at uh, Black Bear. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we um we just started we just started you know doing these regular these regular events and we was fucking the game up, man. And when people saw that there was a value to that, then Smack did he Smack um sort of organizing the URL thing. Right. So we over here, um, PH was over there. We was trying to we was doing the Rex. We was gonna do Rex in Hoffa, T Rex versus Math Hoffa. Mm. Um, that was gonna be the main event for our bad blood event. I think that was the, the event. Bad, I don't remember. Okay. But we had a, an event called Bad Blood, and um the, the main event was supposed to be Math and T Rex. And that started the URL pretty much. And this was already our right. fucking I think we was already more than ten events deep in the game by that time. So right. what came first? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um yeah, so Math and Rex was was booked through grind time and um what happened? Can't ask PH he ain't here. Right. So I don't so it fell through, but yeah. I don't have the details and PH is gone. Maybe so they wanted more money or something. I don't even think it was that. <clears throat> I don't even think it was no. that. I think it was I don't even think it was that. But um okay. a mishap. Something happened with the with the bread. I can't speak on that because that was one of PH's last whatever his last duties as what as uh, the guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it fell through somehow, kind of way. I don't have an answer, right. and we can't do the seance. So whatever. <laughs> um, right. So whatever the mishap came from that, when they seen that that was that that battle freed itself up. And URL swooped in, booked that, made it the main event for their first URL card, which was Smack didn't even host the first URL. If, if y'all know your history, URL first host was Star. So Star hosted that event. Was he? Yes. I'm trying to remember. I just told you. I was there. I'm trying to remember. I just told you. <laughs> what you trying to remember for? <laughs> I remember hosting other URL battles, but I don't remember hosting that one. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Look it up, man. I remember there was a grind time battle that same day. URL through all the events whenever I was throwing an event. Like they they would they were actively whereas I was trying to do shit for the for the scene, like when I would do an event, I would try to make because I I'm a fan too. So if I'm doing something, like so you want to? I want to. I want to make sure y'all not. First of all, there's there's room. For, I always feel there's room for everybody. It's for a certain certain avenue. There's right. room for everybody. There's a million rappers. Like it's a big city. It's a big fucking country. Whatever. Like I would want to mm. go to your event too because I enjoy I enjoy this culture. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I would. I, so I'm doing events like yo, make sure nobody got events that day because I want to go to your event too. That's the type of motherfucker I am. And I go to your event and not have to worry about all the shit I gotta worry about here. Yeah, I go there and just enjoy myself. You know what I'm saying? But they they had an uncanny ability to, but they they was they was trying to you know get it get our legs from under us and it eventually worked. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to them because they they they, been, they they had their business hat on way before I did. I didn't. I was just I, I took the situation that was passed on to me, and I and I and I worked with it. I didn't realize at the time that we would. Fucking building a fucking industry, I I did not know. Right. So so you can think about it now when there's yeah. a, when there's a million people that did it and it's like, but yo, when you the first the first motherfuckers that do shit really get the, the the full credit or accolades or even compensation than people that came after once there was already a foundation and built off of that. The motherfuckers that's that 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 paved the way you don't usually get as much. You know what I mean? As much accolades or recognition, you know what yeah. I'm saying? 
I, I always, anyway, at some point in quiet time, fell apart, and uh, you weren't as active putting uh, uh, events I, together. I went to you. you I went you were to curating. I saw. I mean, well, I, I was active the but, whole time. Yeah. I just, but it's it's in what capacity am I active? Right. You know what I mean? If I'm if I'm with the grind time thing, I was, you know, financing everything out of pocket. I was I was pretty much. I mean, obviously, I had my team with me. I had like Sarah Connor, Does Vega, and all these guys that was helping me. I'm so con and all of them. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, it's just my money. Like I'm booked. I, I'm doing everything but writing the rounds and battling. Like right. I fucking finance the venue. I'm paying everybody out. I'm fucking hosting this shit. I'm 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 getting the flyers done. I'm hitting the street because we still we still doing street team shit. Cause right, right. you know what I mean. I'm online doing it. I'm doing everything. I'm I'm, I'm I walk in. I, you know I gotta fucking take care of the guest list. I'm, you know what I mean. So I'm doing everything. You know what I'm saying. Right. Whereas once once I stopped with the grind time shit, I was able to just yo can you just book this for me and I have this budget. And I was like oh I ain't got so much money. So there's a lot of things I did in Battle Rap that I got a lot of money for. That probably had a lot, a lot of less impact than the shit that I didn't get that much money for. It had a huge impact. Because, mm. because if I tell y'all this, the event that I made the most money off of, the motherfuckers wouldn't even realize it because it wasn't something that, you know, what I mean, it wasn't something that even. It's crazy. It's crazy. But yeah, so when you're doing like when I with the grind time thing, I was pretty much doing everything. But when I when I moved over after the grind time thing. URL got me too. They, they they took a lot of the talent, you know what I mean? Even, you know, whatever, whatever business it worked out. And guess what? Fucking norms got up with me. The grind time shit was looking crazy. I did the fucking I did the Vlad TV interview. They asked me about the shit. I'm like, yeah, this grind time shit wacky. I mean respectfully, because it's it is no hate, but it but this if it was fucked up, it was fucked up. I'm calling out I see it, right. whether I'm a part of it or not. I kinda wish you just changed your name and kept well, I, poison, but, but, poison pen TV. Right. But so, so when that shit was falling apart, then um, and the thing is, if Grind Time had the structure, if they were structured better, it would have never died. But that's a whole other story. Right. But once that shit was going left, fucking Norbs and them was like, "Yo, pen, come over here." And from what we what we spoke about, it sounded good at the time. I ain't had no paperwork with Grind Time. Right. I'm an independent contractor. You know what I'm saying? Even though I hold a lot of weight over there, I don't, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So, right. you know, I got it with norms and shit. And I'm just like, and plus on top of that, like with me, there was never no real hate anyway. Like, like I said, like, there's shit that I disagreed with. And I said, like, but I, but anything that I say here, I can say to them. Right, right. Like everything that I've said in the interview is not nothing that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, that I have not or didn't say or wouldn't say to them. Like, right. if I see a BZ smack, whatever. They know there's no like I got I got a lot of love for what they did. I don't agree with everything they did. Right. I got wild love for them. And they had their business had them more than I did. So how can you be mad at that? They may be certain tactics and shit. I'm like, yo, I don't know about that. But right. on the whole, like, nigga, business is business, bro. You know what I'm saying? So um yeah, I went over there and started fucking with them. I started doing the poison pen that TV shit with them. That's what we got, that's what you got classics like straight seven versus head ice. Mm-hmm. Um, love a home fry. Yeah, home yeah, home fry. <laughs> shotgun, <laughs> shotgun, sugar, sway, fucking chiller, M City. Mm-hmm. You know, I did a lot of classes under the poison pen. Sway cooked. Dot TV. I, that. I mean, a lot of people say sugar got it too. That was a, it was a class. My thing is a class. He, he it was had a that one good grab. line about bifocals. I can't remember the details. You wear you wear you wear glasses because you're scared of contact. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. so we did a lot of classics under that under, under that umbrella too. But um, every you know we didn't. But once again, like I said, I ain't had no paperwork with them either. So once yeah. I, you know, and and plus a lot of the shit that I dealt with with them was through people that wasn't really around like that at the time. So it just didn't make sense for me to keep going with them with the, getting the same result. Like the, the things that I was the point is when I was working with URL, respectfully, like. I was doing all this shit, but under that umbrella, it's like I could I didn't, but the stuff that I was doing with y'all, I didn't tell you need y'all to do. Right. So unless it's pushing me to a different direction or or, or, or making me evolve into something else, I'm with it. But it's like I'm just over here doing like I'm not doing nothing different. Doing the same thing. So to me, it was just like, you know what I mean? I, so 
it didn't speak to me how I thought it should have. You know what I mean? So I just I just stepped off. It wasn't nothing, no harm, no foul, no nothing. Right. You know what I mean? And then um, then I started doing the thing is, but my track record and I've thrown so many prolific battles and I've put on I produce more classic battles than most motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So due to my reputation with that, you know, I've never had an issue. When when King of the Dot come, yo, pay me. All right, bro. Just, just talk business. Let's do it. Like so. That's why I've always had a. When King of the Dot came, he was doing the tournament. No, actually, I started doing fucking with them from the Master Series. But my whole thing was, if anybody follows my history, follow interviews I've done before. Mm-hmm. When they ask me about battle rap, I've always said support battle rap. Like fuck a league, yo. Like support the, the culture. Right. You know, they, they motherfuckers get it twisted now. When you act like if you watch this league. You can't watch that league. All these like that shit is ridiculous. It's like it's crazy. That's like saying I can't watch football and basketball. Right, that's, that's, right. and it's not even football basketball. It's football and football. It's just two right. different fucking teams. Like, like, <laughs> it's like, like if you watch a Yankees game, you can't watch a Mets game. Right. You watch so, the Nick, well, if you watch the Nets, you can't watch the Knicks. Right. right. And, and and that division was is ridiculous to me. So I've always right. said you can watch, you can see enemies me for ten years ago. I've always said, yo, support battle rap. Like fuck supporting the league. Support I support who's doing good business in battle right. rap. That's all I support. I don't I even with the grind time shit, I repped it because I was working there, it, but it's like I want like like that shit, like I, I support who's doing good business and who's treating right. me MC's right and who's treating me right. Other than that, I don't give a fuck who it is. You know what I'm saying? So um so i with that being said, due to my reputation, I've been able to secure bags from each each place, you know what I'm saying? So right. When King of the Dot, and I started working with King of the Dot when uh, the Massacre series passed stay out, you know, I hope, I hope, rest in peace, Pat stay. I hosted his first battle in the States. We brought him out to battle Calico. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I started started producing the, um, the Massacre series with uh, with Nakaya, and, and then the King of the Dot came in with that. So I started doing all these, mm-hmm. like, yo, bro, if I, I can't even still work with King of the Dot? Nah. Or none of these niggas. <laughs> You felt kind of fell back from the battle scene. No, nah, I mean I work with with, with this business. I'm there. Like I got I got something work. I got something, but I don't. I'm not tied to nobody. So that's that's the answer to the question. Like I did the I did the tournament with King of the W. We did the fifty thousand dollar tournament during pandemic. We did two tournaments during pandemic. I was a part of that. It was dope. Bought them a lot of views and shit like that. And I, you know, that's that. You know what I'm saying? I don't work with them. I mean, it is what it is. I, 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 it's possible I can work with them again. The last, the last thing I did major in battle rap, like it's for a major platform. I mean, I, I mean, did, we did a GTX event. Like I, I do, I do battle. I still do battle events like every other month. It's just different, right. different magnitude. Like I did a, we did the GTX Upstate early. Was it early January? We did that. I've got something trying to lock in for March. I'm not gonna mention that yet. Just case we fall through. You know what I'm saying? But um, I've, I've hosted numerous our battle events because that's that's just that's under the umbrella anyway. That's Lex. That's Team Army. So right. I host our battle events and shit like that. Ooh, talk about the formation of Team Hami and, and how that happened. That came that came from uh pretty much when from Grand Town shit. Really, Team Hami started with Grand Town East Coast, mm-hmm. and um it was the guys. Well, it wasn't open. We had a big roster, but a lot of the guys that was on a similar kind of vibe, or niggas already fucking with each other, but. It's just like, yo, let's make it official. And it was um Swave and Cortez. Cortez was the original team I mean, Swave and Cortez and like Ike PH, whatever. Mm-hmm. So it started, it started from Grind, it started from Team Army started from Grind Time East Coast. You know what I'm saying? So, but it was pretty much but Swave Swave was pretty much the, the catalyst behind most of the Team Army shit though. Right. Yeah, but it started. It started. It started from It started from grind time. Started from the battle rap shit, and then evolved into what it what it is. But yeah, and what, and what is it now? It's a lot of motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> and there's times when I link up with you, and you just got like, especially during, during, the, during the battle heydays, you be like 30, 40 people. I'm like, what Same the hell? Man, I couldn't. Yo, when we was doing all those events, like it was rare. Hey, it's funny because you know me. Cause, like most places, I go like dolo. Right. But when it comes and all of a sudden you was yeah, 30, 40 now, but when it comes to those events, it was it was rare that I was with less than 25, 30 people. 
like red. Like like I like I would pull up to an event and it'd be like uh, half the block behind me trailing me and shit. Like who you with? And <laughs> it'd be somebody and down there. Put your hand up. Be like all was ten plus extras. This is even bigger. Yeah, more headaches, less headaches. Headaches. Every crew has headaches. Every anytime there's you, always a fuck up. Anytime, anytime it's not. I mean, you, you probably give yourself a headache by yourself, but like, not nah, anytime yeah. you got to deal with multiple multiple individuals and multiple personalities. It's always headaches. Is if is is if you choose is if, if it's worth it to you or not. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I love my people. So, but yeah, it's definitely headaches because we don't see eye to eye all the time. Like, if it's, if it's more than 10 motherfuckers, there's no way in the world you're going to see eye to eye with all 15, 20, 30 of these motherfuckers. <laughs> no. There's never going to be a time we all going to see eye to eye with my, my bros all the time. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but that's what that's. that's yeah, not, Jacob. Not with me. Listen yeah. <laughs> listen here, yeah, man. You can never say that. So, Penn, uh, what are some of the favorite battles that you've put together as a curator, promoter? There's been a lot of interesting battles that I put together and there's a lot of interesting ones for different reasons. Like a lot of a lot of the a lot of the platinum battles, the ones that did a million more views, I'm proud of that just because of the view count. Right. And I'm like, I did that. So any any anyone name, name some of them. Sway Swave Disaster. Right. That's a favorite of mine because that whole event, the story behind that whole event was was crazy. Right. And that was the first time um, Disaster came to New York. The Soros also better than that. The Soros and Cortez better than that night as well. Too. There was a lot of good battles that night, but I'm, yeah. I'm talking about that. But the Swing Disaster hit a million. I don't know, I don't know if the Cortez the Soros hit a million or more. Swing Disaster definitely had a million, right. more than a million. What was the story behind that? Um, Behind Swing and Disaster? Yeah. Well, if anyone follows the battle scene, you know, Disaster is a very polarizing figure. You know what I'm saying? Like, you love him or hate him. You know what I mean? He, you know, he feeds into that very well. Yeah. So I was just saying when he when he was coming out here, a lot of people didn't want him out here. You know what I mean? A lot of people ain't want him out here. A lot of people, you know, was you know, from I, LA too. Right? Yeah, he's, he's yeah. from the valley. He's yeah. from the valley. So a lot of people was like, you know, you know, plotting a scheme and type shit. And I'm like, well, I understand what he may have said online and shit like that, but you understand if I bring him here to do this event. First of all, this is for the culture. That's one. Mm-hmm. Two, if something happens to this guy, that's nobody's gonna ever wanna come out here and fuck with us. You know what I mean? And three, if I bring this man out here to handle business and y'all violate him, that's a violation to me. So, you know what I mean? So please don't do that because I love y'all and I don't wanna be at odds with y'all either. Right. So I just say that in a nutshell, you know what I mean? So it was a lot of, I had to do a lot of damage control. Mm-hmm. When when Diz came over, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and and a lot of and, and and one one of the reasons that battle was so special too, a lot of other future battles spawned from that, like from Swaven Disaster, you, you know, uh, Disaster and Disaster and DNA came out of that, Disaster and Cortez came out of that, you know what I'm saying, um, and which Drake was a part of, so all that like mm-hmm. that event right there spawned so many other side stories and side quests. <laughs> and battle rap. So Slave Disaster was a was a favorite of mine. You know what I mean? Just due to like the, the, the tension and everything. And then once 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 the battle happened, you know what I mean? He, see, he made it back safe. It's all good. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that was good for me because I wanted to make sure. So that was that was that was a very pivotal battle for me. Um has he battled in New York since? Uh did he battle? I don't know if he battled if the T-Rex battle was in New York. But he hasn't he hasn't battled in New York. In a very long time, I, you know, was, yeah. you know, what I mean, I know him and him and Hoffa was at odds for. I ain't gonna get into all that, right? Right. That's a whole other story. But shout him after. Um, he ain't been in New York in a while, but that was the yeah. fir- that was his first time, right? Right. Venturing out to the side, and I had you know make sure he was good and all of that. And at that time, it was a beautiful thing. So and we, and we got right. a classic, we got a classic battle out of that. So that's that's a goodie for me. Um, Sue Surf versus Conceited. Mm. Sue Surf versus Conceited, I'm very proud of that one too because that's when I was, you know, you know, intermingling, you know, working with URL. I don't know if that was before or after we made the announcement, but I was already, I was already working with them. You know, had Swave over there, bought money bags over there. Like, well, shit, they half, half of the street dudes we had went to fucking URL, and, and I, and I went over there too. Half. Uh, 
<laughs> All of them? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ronnie. So, um, but Kashida and Sue Surf was crazy because that was a part of, I'm going to believe, the Armageddon, like all these cars, this has been a long time. So I think it's the Armageddon card. It was it was a great it was on 23rd Street at what's the show on Gramercy Theater? Yeah. Gramercy Theater. This is like 2012. And it was um Sue Surfer and a bunch of other battles obviously was really going on that day at the Armageddon card. I think it was Armageddon. Right. So um he's locked up right now, right? Free surf, free to yeah. wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surf, surf's locked up, you know, Rico shit, all that. Right. Um yeah. so free surf, you know what I'm saying? Right. So we had the event going on at Gramercy Theater. And of course, URL events. It's a zoo. Everybody come out for URL events. That's one thing URL is master. You know what I'm saying? So anytime, yeah. it's, a, anytime it's a URL event, Athletes. it's 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 a madhouse. So, and but I think at that time, they probably didn't realize, they, they might not realize how, how this shit was burgeoning and bubbling into something humongous pause. Right. So anyway, the event is a zoo. It's hectic. There's a billion people out there. It's and it's so unorganized. And I and you know I kind of help keep a lot of structure. You know what I'm saying? I used to, you know, help help in a lot of ways as far as structure and shit. Anyway, so there's a bunch of, you know, there's a confrontation over here. There's a scuffle over here. There's police press, cops is in the building. Anyway, so the event is going bad. Like so, we couldn't get no battles done. Couldn't get no battles done. I think one battle had happened. Oh boy. If whoever saw whoever just you, you can refresh my memory on that. I think a battle, I think one battle did occur, but then you know it was too heavy. I see hands. I think hands and calico I got into something in the crowd. There's a bunch of crazy shit going on. Broken hands? Yeah. yeah. So um it got to the point where they shut the event down. Like, yo, ain't nothing happening, whatever, whatever. And I'm telling smack and I'm like, yo, fam, we gotta have a battle. Today, yo, niggas is gonna go crazy if we don't get at least one battle done and completed. One of these main battles for the people. Like, mm -hmm. he was like, yo, fam, I ain't got no spot. I'm like, give me a minute. Now, mind you, remember, I had that that was that was my strong point that that I don't that I didn't get a lot of credit for, mm -hmm. is that a, a good amount of those venues that you see a lot of those classic battles in. A lot of the new venues that I procured, a, yeah, a very, 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 very good amount of those. You can look at Drum, that was me. Black Bear, that was me. All that shit on up six, mm -hmm. that was me. All those spots like ARP and all of them start doing this shit after. You know what I'm saying? By the way, I also got Black Bear for uh, and a couple other venues for URL. I just want to take credit. This is not your interview. I know. I know. So, it's, um, about you. It's, our, it's my podcast. Nigga. Exactly. So um, <laughs> they needed some place to go, and I'm right. like, "Yo, we got to get this battle done." So yeah, people were scared at some time. So I even book battle rap, like, right? So I made fights and whatnot. So I made a bunch of calls. And this is this is you know I'm like, "Yo, we need some place to go right now to do a battle. Where can we go right now?" So I made a bunch of calls. I hit my people at the pyramid. Doubles at the pyramid. I'm like, "Yo, fam, I got about 500 people here." Right now, I need to throw a battle right now. I need to bring half of Manhattan to the club right now. What y'all doing? Oh, well, we was going to have an open mic. Ain't a lot of people. You doing the battle over there? I'm going to put a tweet out. I'm going to send half the city down there. I'm like, yo, I locked it in. I sent the tweet. The whole world came to the pyramid. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And um, we got up in there. Next thing you know, got another classic out. And that's a battle that, you know, to this day, like, I, I, I'm on Facebook, I'm on everything, and I still, people still put up clips of this fucking battle. And, and to know that that battle, that battle wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for me, right. I'm, a, I'm a part of that history. And that battle got millions and millions of views. This is Sue Surf and Sue Surf and Cassie. Cassie. So, you know, I'm, so I got that over there. And he's on Wild and Out. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So that was a great battle that I, that, 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 if I wasn't around, the battle wouldn't have happened, or it wouldn't have happened in that in that fashion. He had a meme um, that that look he, he gave. What happened? Oh, that was the, the, the look. side. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. oh, that's from that battle, right? <laughs> oh, is it? I don't, I don't know. It, it might not be from that battle, but yeah, Casita has yeah, memes yeah, with yeah. his faces and all that. Yeah, but yeah, so that was that was to to have know that if 
I, if I didn't if I didn't make my moves in that battle wouldn't have happened. Right. And that battle was such an impact of battle history. I take pride in that. Um math math in uh daylight when I did the event in LA. <laughs> Um, Were you trying to shit on the stage? No, nah, that wasn't that one. Okay. I mean, Daylight has done a lot of antics. This particular yeah, antics in this one. Naked. That wasn't that one. I know that was. But yeah, that was that was total slaughter, right? Or was that? Yeah, no. yeah, that's total slaughter. Okay. Oh, yeah, but we had we had um, I did an event. I partnered up with YouTube. I'm the first person to partner up with YouTube and throw battles, not to put battles on YouTube. I mean, throwing battles with YouTube. Mm, that's I did. dope. Um, so I was in YouTube space in LA. 2013, June 1st, 2013. And uh, Math and Daylight was one of the headlines. And that was a great battle just for the history of everything, like bringing Math. I think that might have been Math's first battle in Los Angeles, maybe. But I think. And then he put a hands on him or something? Yeah, a lot of shit was... happened in that battle. That was the um, pouring water on the shoes. And yeah, 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 yeah. What, what the hell? Fucking I, Daylight I mean, pulled out the pillow and went to sleep on stage. That was funny. So, yeah, so like that was, that was, that was, that was dope. He's so animated and everything. Yeah, so that was a fire event to be a part of. Um, mm-hmm. like the Gigi Allen of uh, uh, yeah, daylight. Rap. Daylight is 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 a is a um one of one man, and he knew what he, he knew what it took to get people talking, right? And he's a master at that. So so shouts to him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the Massacre series. I'm very proud of what we did for the Massacre series. You know, with uh, my man Nakaya, and um, Pat Stavers Calico. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Very, very happy to be a part of bringing Pat State to the United States for the first time. I was his first battle in the States. Mm-hmm. And Pat and Calico, that was a classic. That was in Massachusetts. You know what I mean? So I take pride in that. Um, this is so many battles, bro. Um, you know, doing the um doing the judge getting the judging system straight for me, me and Direct getting the judging system straight for the for the Chrome 23 for Remy, for Remy Mars tournaments and shit. We did right. we took care of that. You know, I mean, there's been so many, so many different things that we've done that I'm proud of in this shit. Um, you call me a beer, Jeff. Mm. No, you, you, that's that's Remy's call, man. Okay. <laughs> well, 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 why you told to call me, man? Yo, Remy, why didn't you call GJ J Ronan? See what I'm dealing with over here, people? Nigga, I was, I, I was good enough to grow up to judge grind time guess, battles. Guess what? Remy blocked me, nigga. <laughs> 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 But yeah, um, I'm trying to think of like yeah. real classic. Ba- I mean, there's been so many man that we've been a, a part lot. of, man. But but oh, math math Hoff and, and Marv one was a good one. Yeah, because that, that was, was all beach, right. bringing math back after after he had um kind of had his little had a, he he kind of had a little decline after the um a verb summer madness. Yeah. So you know, math got with me, came to the hood, came to the style. And um, I helped him formulate his comeback trail mm. when he started battling every fucking other week and shit like that. So he started, right. and he started his run back with me doing the Marv One battle, right? So and he did very well in the Marv One battle. Was that at Drum? That was at Drum. Was it the same day as Swave Head Ice? Uh, or a different day. It, it was either Swave Head Ice or Swave and. Uh, Shotgun Sugar. Shotgun Sugar. Right, I was, def- I was definitely there though. Yeah, yeah. Um, I ain't Silent versus Enes is a good classic that we was a part of back in the day. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Enes mm-hmm. for making the band. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those. Are, mm-hmm. But I, but but honestly, I'm not gonna lie, man. I oh, so many years and so many battles and shit. Yeah. Like I'd have to really sit down and think of each one, but those those stand out to me for different reasons and shit. And any battle that that I produced that got more than a million. That's fly because you know that's that's like a that's that's a platinum plaque right there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So definitely, uh, I, I like I like anytime one of them Jones going to the seven digits because I see y'all numbers and y'all niggas ain't getting views like that. So the fact that we did some shit that that have generated that amount of attention, it's, it's yeah. amazing. Uh-huh. Like I look at all those all those early like yeah. you know all those when they were putting out the list years back of the top battles and da da da, and I was looking like half of them. Not more would be shit that I was a part of and shit that I do, and I'm like, yo, that's that's what's up, man. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I'm not as hands on now as I once was. You know what I mean? Shit evolves and shit. So, and I'm sometimes you need to take a break and step back. You know what I mean? So, I'm not I'm not every day 100 percent 
on it now. I, 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 I'm there when I need to be there, but right. you know, I, mean, I got my own shit to change to, man. I, I, I got my own career to worry about. Speaking of your own career, I know uh, you dropped the Joe Jack video a while back. Rest in peace to Vice Versus and Jay Arch. Uh, talk a little bit about that and um, new music you have coming out. I mean, Joe Jack, this record I did a little while ago. My, shout out to my man Vice Versus. You know what I mean? Eo Dub, you know, good friend of mine. That's a euphemism I use for my guy and shit. You know, I used to call him Joe Jackson. You see, <laughs> being, this, this motherfucker being in the studio, like. Coaching people? Yo, bro, like, yo, like, like it's funny because it was always like to his his little home. Like, he wouldn't do it to me because, like, you know, like, that's, we kind of peers, whatever. You know, he's older than me, but we were peers. But, like, right. like his, the people that he was developing and, you know, coming up under him. Like, yo, this motherfucker was a tyrant in the studio. So it was so funny. We would go to the studio and he'd be like, yo, and he like just mad forceful. And I and, and, and you know, I'm a jerk. You know what I'm saying? I I'm never a, saw the aspect of him before. See, you ain't go to the studio with him. No, you know what I'm saying? Like, like Vice is a great dude, but like in the studio, he's definitely yo, yo, yo. Like he, you know, you see how he hosts the show, how he hosted the EOW show? Yeah. He, he's a very like he's kind, but he's very forceful still. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So but that in the studio, well, maybe with a little bit less of the kindness, <laughs> still a good guy. But Vice would Vice would direct the traffic in the studio. Bottom line, that's right, the point. Right. So I would always clown like he'd be in the studio. Nah, do this, do this, do that. Da, 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 da. I used to play audio engineering people. You recording them? Nah, no, no, normally the artists, like people that he's working with, like you right, know what I'm right. saying, like the, the, the other rappers or singers or whatever. So I used to just be in there watching. I used to be like, damn, Joe Jack. So I, I used to call, so I used to call him Joe Jackson. Right, right. And he used to get mad. Yo, what the fuck you call Because I, I don't know, like maybe he had a negative view of what Joe, or Joe Jackson and shit or whatever. Right. But I used to always call him. Anytime he would get like extra with it, I'd be like, damn, yo, chill out, Joe Jack. Yo, relax, Joe Jack. And he would like, he would kind of like grumble and shit. And I'm like, but then I told him, I was like, yo, but I said, but I said, I said, you man, I'm calling you Joe Jack, but I'm saying, but, but look, look at what Joe Jack did. Though. Look, look after after Joe Jack, after Joe Jack put them kids on, and, 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 and it was a beast of them in that studio. Look at what happened. So I mean, like you get mad, but I mean that's not really a, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So it was kind of just like an inside joke, you know what I'm saying? For for Vice, I, anytime he would get hype, I would just call him Joe Jack. And then my son died and shit. You know what I mean? She was very sad. My nigga, I miss him and shit. And um, uh, nah. So I be you know I be writing. I rap. You know what I'm saying? I be writing. And I don't I don't do um. I'm not a fan of no fucking sad tribute shit. I ain't trying to hear no songs crying and shit, man. You know what I mean? Even though there are songs that make people do that or whatever, that's not. That's just not the type of shit that I do. If yeah. anybody follows my shit, I'm a, you know, aggressive up front. I spit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really trying to be all pulling at the heartstrings and shit. Like, so I'm gonna pay tribute to high pay tribute. So, you know what I mean? I had the beat, and I was just like, yo, let me just incorporate my brother in this shit. So. Anytime a motherfucker hear this song, it's automatic gonna go pay tribute to my nigga, whether you whether you know or not. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and so, so shout and, and actually that record actually was actually a it was a paying tribute to, to Vice, and it's actually paying tribute to somebody else too that nobody a lot of people didn't catch catch on to. The second verse, it was actually I was actually giving love to another one of my big homies that died, MF Doom. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So and Doom Doom was that was that was one of my guys too. You know what I'm saying? So right, right. So the second verse, it was kind of like, you know, but like I said, I don't I'm not like, yo, I miss you. We should go to the studio and make songs together. Hug bitches and get it on together. I don't do that corny shit. Like I'm just going, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm I'm gonna just throw references at you that so people can go and fuck with it and be like, whatever, right, you know right. what I mean? So that's 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 how I pay tribute, just like I like I said off the camera, like I'm not gonna mention people I don't fuck with it. I don't I don't, I don't want you to have like anyway. If I want people to fuck with you, I'm gonna do a song. I'm gonna say your fucking name. So people are like, yo, what the fuck is Joe Jack about? My, yeah. my nigga Vice Versus. Ah, that's the I whole point. I didn't realize what I was about to do. I gotta go back and listen to it now. The second verse, I, I like. And I, I, said, and I recorded that song. And he recorded it. But see, like I said, like you gotta know to know. If you notice, like if you if people follow rhyme structures and shit, the second verse was uh, I said. I only play the games that I win. That Mama Cita's favorite syntax is where that nigga pen at. That whole, that whole, the whole structure of that shit was. I only play the games that I win at. Right rhymes more than this waste of skin cats. Matter of fact, let me rephrase. There's a fine way to fillet, fillet felines these days. 
Anyway, I just restructured the whole Doom verse from uh. Bam, 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 bam. Song. Just, yeah. dun, dun, the Scooby Doo shit. Yeah, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. So that was that was that that verse was literally the pattern of that, and I literally right. started it with the same exact words. But if you if you ain't paying attention, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So that was just me giving Doom giving Doom a little homage too, because you know when I was coming up, he he looked out for me and shit. And, and you got a green hood on, right? I had to, like, like Doctor Doom. There you go. And I and I and I got. I was able to, <laughs> I was able to cook with son and you know what I mean? So like yeah, yeah. that's how I pay tribute shit like that, you know what I mean? So it me like me and Doom, you know what I'm saying? We we had history, you know what I mean? So I just figured I'd throw it in there like that, just so if you know, you know type shit. But if you watch an interview, you know. Right. Whatever. So yeah, shout to Doom, shout to Um, shout to VZ, shout to Ruck, you know what I mean? So before we get up out of here, new music, new projects coming. What's going on, man? Mm -hmm. People been asking me. I got people complaining to me. Yo, why you got, got more stuff coming out with Ben? What's up, man? I mean, yo, I, 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 listen, I stay recording, bro. It's just that, you know, a lot of like a lot of real life shit happens, though. Fucking, I mean, first of all, you know, life shit, pandemic shit happened. Yeah. Motherfuckers just lose passion for shit. Not passion for rhyming, but it's like you record a project and they'll be like, eh, I don't feel this anymore. Whatever. You know what I mean? But, um, Actually, me and me and DJ Static, we're finishing a a, a project now. Nice. You know what I'm saying? So it's gonna be all produced by Static. You know nice. what I mean? You um, know, yeah. So I'm I'm cooking, bro. I'm, just, I'm cooking. Okay. I'm out here. You know what I mean? I just now it's just more. It's, it's a little more purposeful and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like like whereas before, I mean it's always purposeful, but you know before it's like motherfuckers was just writing all day for the sake of writing, and then it does like. Motherfuckers is older now, like, uh, it's like, you gotta hone in on certain shit and just fulfill right. the objective and all that. But you, you see, I'm, I'm, bro, like, come out and see me. I'm, I'm always, I'm always rocking. I always got new mm -hmm. shit. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the people, the people still love the fat man. You know just what I mean? Just came back from LA, Torrance. Just came back, word, just came back from LA, but not LA, came out from San Diego. My bad. Southern yeah. California. Yeah, Southern California. I was in LA for a night though. I did go. I did go to LA one night. But now we just we just San Diego and Orange County. Was you overseas too? Um, many times. Yeah, please. Not not in the past few months, but many okay. times. Oh, what? Well, check this talking about your birthday party. What do you say? Uh, you rock three festivals in three countries in twenty four hours. Yeah. Jesus. That's and cool. that was. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think nobody's ever done that. Like, I'm not. I mean, I mean, if motherfuckers can research and see if somebody else has done it. Let me know. But um, yeah, that's that was working hard. Right before that was a little bit before pandemic, maybe 17, 18, maybe two thousand nineteen at the latest. Right. But it was whatever. And we did. Uh, we flew all the way to Europe. We did. Let me try to remember the three countries. We did a festival in Prague, Czech Republic. Yep. Uh. Holland, Denmark. Holland or Denmark? Ain't Denmark Holland the same shit? No. No, Denmark Holland two different places. Countries. I'm bugging. Holland and the Netherlands is the same shit. Yes. I'm from Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holland and the Netherlands is the same shit. Holland, Denmark. Well, you've been to these places a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Denmark, Dem Copenhagen. Right, right. I, 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 I fucked up. Yeah. So, Prague. Do they, do they all come in Vikings? Yes. Holland, <laughs> which is Amsterdam, Netherlands. Right, right. And Transylvania, Romania, Romania. Okay, right. Yes, right. Yes, I do good in geography. Yeah, nigga. But yeah, we all literally in one. Like we landed, we fucking landed and drove like three, four hours. Touched down, went to a venue. Got on stage at like 11, 12 o'clock, midnight. It was one show with like, and there was so many people, like uh, both Young and May was out there. Mm. Young and May was out there. Fucking Beat Nuts was out there. Is it Transylvania? This is Prague. Prague, okay. That's what they do. Kevin, uh, matter of fact, camp. matter of yeah. fact, all of these, all these shits was combined. Matter of fact, that weekend, how many people, like, yo, man, Kevin Gates. Yeah. Yeah. It was everybody, it was Kevin, nigga from Kevin Gates. 
I'm, I'm, these are all the festivals together. I can't remember who was at each one, but these are all the people that I remember from that trip. Kevin Gates, Young and May, J. Ru the Damager, the Beat, the Beat Nuts, yep. the Jizza, mm -hmm. Cunning Linguist, mm -hmm. Chino XL. North Carolina. Nah, they from Kentucky. What? Yeah. Oh, oh no, Noah's from North Carolina, right? He's from Kentucky, right? No, no. Wait, 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 no, from. Some of them are from North Carolina. Um, anyway. Okay. Shout out to Cunt Language. No. Okay. Shout out to Nat shout, shout to No. Shout out to Natty. No, Natty and Deacon the Villain and SOS. Shout out to all of y'all. Right. But it was a bunch of motherfuckers. Anyway, we did four. So we, we landed. We, we landed, did one show. Fucking went to the airport, flew, <laughs> went to another show. And just and just rinse and repeat, and it's all and it was all within twenty four hours. Crazy. Went to three different countries and rocked three different festivals. And I'm talking not shows, festivals, festivals. So each of these, each of these, each of these spots was more than 15,000 people each one. And this is all in one day. So we rocked for about probably close to like fifty thousand people in just one day, just nice bouncing nice. around. And that's an underground rap. This ain't no fucking. You know, it's yeah, independent. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So yeah, man, that was that was crazy. But yeah, I don't think I don't I don't think anyone's ever done no shit like that. Before. I know. In, in a game, that's crazy. That's cr like yo, motherfucker. I remember back in the day when was it Jay Z or something? Who did that back in the day out here? Um, airport hangers. No, no, it was um. I remember Jay doing was, that. Was it Jay? They did a they did they did one they did a, they did a show in each they did one in one day they did a show in each borough back a few years back. It was, it was it was a major artist. It might have been a J or Fabulous or something. I don't remember. Years back, maybe fifty. Maybe fifty. I think fifty fifty did a five city tour. It was one Not of nine one day. No, it was one of the motherfuckers. This is years. I'm gonna have to Google that shit. If I remember, mm -hmm. remember, should be correct. They did each borough. They did like a joint each borough, mm -hmm. like all in one day, like after in the morning here and afternoon here, and it just boom boom. So it's, what I'm saying, the point I'm getting at is, it's hard enough to do that shit in one city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hard enough to do that shit in one city, let alone. Country, three countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we we, we did that. We did a lot of shit, bro. Like it's, it's been a long, it's been it's been a journey, kid. You know what I'm saying? We got we got we got we got more shit to do. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But yeah, we definitely gonna do a part two before we get up out of here. Give me your social media information. Make sure you follow Poison Pen, y'all. This is my bro, Poison Pen BK across all social media platforms. Farmer chat and uh, all that. Uh, Black Planet, all that. Mi gente, Asian Mi Avenue. Gente. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't even know what that one was. I'm on. I'm on Asian Avenue. I'm on. I'm on uh, every, Asian Avenue. Avenue. Christian Mango. Are you cuckoo? Are, 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 are you cuckoo for the Mushu? <laughs> Let me find out. Uh oh, now. He 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 was chewing me, Bonjour. What you talking about? Bro? All right. I'm 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 on, I'm on all the, everything but Grinder. I'm not on Grinder. Respect respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you follow him at Poison Pen BK. Yeah, Poison Pen BK. On everything, y'all. Once again, I'm tapped in. DJ J Ronan. It's your boy Jacob. He's talking. Look at him, yeah. people. He can talk. Know. All right, we about out of here, y'all. Peace. <laughs>